untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Okay, pack one, pick one. Opened one of the best bombs in the set, so don't mind if I do. Easy first pick. And what are we passing? Some uh, decent white cards. Shepherd could be quite good if we wheel it somehow. Uh, Bardiche maybe in an equipment deck. Anointer for kind of the red, green or blue, red oil counter decks. Anoint with Affliction would be great in black, white as well. Not sure what we're hoping to wheel out of this pack, besides Shepherd, which is just in our primary color. Kind of depends what our secondary color ends up being, but uh, Eternal Wonder it is. Followed up with another great white card, Annex Sentry. Removal built into a creature. Seems great. And then other good cards in the pack include Crescendo in red as a pump spell. Batter Fists, also quite good. 3-1, that still leaves an equipment behind. And uh, Prophetic Prism for the artifact decks, and then Predation, probably the next best card. It's on the same level as Sentry in terms of power level. But uh, of course, since we have a white card already, Sentry gets the nod here. And next up, no great white cards. There's some playable ones, like I might put a Helm in my equipment deck. The Attendant could be okay, especially when facing some enchantment removal spells. can pick up your creature again, replay it, get a token. But these aren't cards I'm excited to third pick. That being said, also don't want a red-black gold card, which isn't all that exciting to begin with. We have some expensive red removal which is also not particularly exciting. And against all odds, while we can choose both modes, still not particularly exciting either. So I'll try the Attendant here. Keep cutting off white. Possible Helm is still better, just as a cheaper card if we do end up in an equipment deck somehow. Now we have another Crescendo in red. Singer is a fine to drop. And then in white, another Helm. Raptor for kind of the toxic synergies. And a charge of might, which at least is flexible. Can either make tokens or be used as removal. Annihilating Glare might be the best card overall. If we do end up in black-white, can sacrifice maybe a random token and then take out an opposing creature or even Planeswalker. And can always cast it for 5 mana. So I think I'll dip into a second color here, even though we have some playable white cards. Raptor would probably be my pick if I were to stick to white. But Glare I think is enough of a sign that I should take a second color. Even the Paladin, honestly, could also be the pick as a nice 2 for 1. But since we have Wander as a powerful late game bomb, just want to make sure we have some cheap removal to keep up. And then now I'm lacking the Hive Master to kind of continue our token sacrifice theme with annihilating glare and some more toxic creatures which could also enable some of the synergies in black white with corrupted dross skull bomb would also be nice sadly doesn't get back planeswalkers but still a, a nice two for one in the late game and uh yeah not passing anything too amazing dross bits i would also play Okay, that's another Raptor, might be worth taking now. Could also take a Gladiator just to have a 2-drop, which we don't have yet, looking at our curve. And see, yeah, our deck might be able to enable Corrupted. So, let's try and draft a slightly lower curve to make sure we survive to the point where we can cast our Wanderer. And then pass another Raptor. Gladiator is also pretty good with Glare if we can bring it back from the graveyard. So, decent start to our draft. Hopefully the black cards keep flowing and we can build a nice black-white corrupted deck. Okay. This time around, Golem would be excellent for 
the oil counter decks, but black white is about as far removed from Acre Play Golem as possible, so not gonna be great for us. Could just take a Prophetic Prism, replaces itself, can maybe fix our mana if we want to splash over Helm. And then we're passing a couple good red cards besides Golem for the oil counter archetype. So it's possible we should be pivoting into red-white, but then the problem is red-white is more equipment than oil counters, so we wouldn't necessarily get the most out of it. Sinew Dancer is not a card I particularly like, although it could be okay if we enable Corrupted for it. Alternatively, I can take a red card anyway here with a Batter Fist, since Offer is pretty replaceable as a combo trick, and then there's still a chance we end up a red-white after all. Okay, so this was our first pack. Did not wield the Angel, which I'm not too surprised about. There's a Bardiche, which could be fine if we do end up red-white. Could also play Atlas as a way to ramp into our Wanderer ahead of schedule. But uh, let's try the Bardiche. I think I still prefer it over Finisher, given that we don't have a ton of equipment yet. Well, that's actually close. Maybe I should give Finisher a try. And then now Crescendo, so red is wheeling. So maybe red-white is the place to be. And do I want Nahiri's Sacrifice? It's not bad with a Formiridon equipment, so maybe we'll try it. If I could go back with the current knowledge, we might have been able to pick up a few more equipment. But overall, our deck would pretty much look the same. The 2-2 two -two Flyers with Toxic, also not the most synergistic in red-white anyway, so not sad that we passed those up. And another Helm's not bad now with our finisher, getting a 1-mana discount for each equipment. So red-white looks like the most likely place for this deck to go. But there's still a chance we pivot back into black-white if we open some great cards for it. But I'm definitely going to play the Eternal Wanderer. Okay, well, we definitely opened a bomb here, Archfiend. Good incentive to stick to black. But let's take a look at the other cards out of curiosity. Drown and Icker would also be great, not expecting to wheel it. Skitterfang, better in the oil counter archetypes, where it can be quite good. And then there's another Helm, and that's pretty much it. So we might wheel a Grimnark, at which point I might actually take the Atlas. Now with an Archfiend, we might be on the lookout for some ways to proliferate in black, but uh, usually the Archfiend can close out the game before it matters that the uh, last oil counter is removed. Follow that up with... Maybe an edifice. The uh, Veil's pretty bad. Crawling Chorus can be a way to enable Corrupted if we have a lot of Corrupted payoffs early on. And it is Sacrifice Fodder for something like Annihilating Glare. Although, kind of like edifice as a way to potentially take out a creature when it enters. Uh, Inquiry could also be decent, just draw two and maybe enable your Corrupted Synergies. But the format has seemed kind of aggressive, so spending turn 3 not impacting the board and losing a bunch of life on top of that doesn't seem amazing. So I'll try Edifice. Yeah, we're not really in a position to take Unctus and play it, so that doesn't leave a ton of great options. Complete Devotion as a trick, even though our deck doesn't seem incredibly aggressive, might still be worth it. A Dune Mover, Especially if we're planning to splash a third color, still a fine two drop as it has toxic. Um, can probably wheel a Grimnark, so don't have to prioritize it now. Sure, we'll take a complete devotion. And then follow that up with probably the Bladed Ambassador. Two mana, three one, can become indestructible. Sure. Skull Bomb would be a nice one to wheel. 
And that's a late ossification, wow. So white is definitely flowing in this direction. Another flensing raptor. In hindsight, now that we opened the uh, archfiend and pivoted back into black-white, having a couple raptors would have been nice. But that's okay. Take ossification and move on. And then I think it's safe to say we're settling into black-white. So less interested in the helms now. Might still play one if we need filler. And then we need to pick up some more cheap toxic creatures and duelist will do. Bunch of red-green as well in the pack. So looking at our curve. Could use more cheap creatures, especially ones with toxic. Ooh, shepherd is great. Definitely pick that up. Scourge I would also not mind, but we're kind of low on early corrupted enablers. And uh, Shepherd's pretty decent, don't have any 5 drops yet, so it fills out our curve nicely. Skull Bomb I wouldn't mind. Gladiator could use another one. Do I want my first to vanish into eternity? Seems okay. Pretty flexible removal spell. Now that we moved away from equipment, I'm less into the Bardish. Although we could still play one just as kind of a curve filler. But one vanish seems okay. Not a huge fan of the Van of Rebirth. And then now we could take our Grimnark as another curve topper. Or I could take the Atlas. Which honestly wouldn't be bad. Can set up a turn 4 Shepherd, turn 5 Eternal Wanderer. And we have some ways to potentially get the three poison to start draining the opponent. But uh, we'll see how the six drop works out, and then now we can take Atlas. Okay, the more aggressive our deck, probably the better, because then we're less likely to lose to our own Archfiend. And cards like the Complete Devotion also get better the more aggressive our deck is. Don't know if I'll play a second Grimnark. So yeah, more cheap creatures, especially ones with Toxic, is kind of the message here going into pack 3. Now our deck doesn't have a lot of card draw, so actually drawing our Eternal Wanderer is uh, going to be less consistent than, uh, let's say, a blue-white deck with a few card draw effects. Draws Skull Bomb, probably the pick over Helm. In terms of removal, we've got our Ossification, Sentry, and Eternity. I'll take a Sinew Dancer, but I don't expect to play it. Ooh, opened a Sword of Forge and Frontier. Yeah, that can be quite the bomb. So not going to pass it up. Um, Shepherd would have been probably the next best card for us. But uh, yeah, take Sword, and then that further kind of motivates us to pick up some cheap creatures that we can equip. If Red-Green is one of the more popular decks in Limited, then having protection against both colors is quite useful. And then follow that up with maybe a Duelist. Over Hive Master, prioritize the two mana creature. Skitterling can be a decent payoff for Corrupted, but enabling the Skitterling is going to be the problem. And our deck is kind of light on generating sacrifice fodder. The uh, Shepherd's good at doing so, but we didn't pick up any of the one drops that leave behind a token. Not an artifact deck, so Enforcer would require a couple Might tokens to get to plus 2 plus 0. So maybe want uh, Vraska's Fall as maybe a Corrupted Enabler. Okay, another Annihilating Glare perhaps. Close one between Gladiator and Glare, but Gladiator were probably more likely to wheel.
Not a fan of the flesh cutter, just a bit too pricey to play and equip. Okay, this is basically just a 3 mana 3 3 toxic one. Don't have any rats in our deck. So, probably prefer yet another glare. Could also take a draw spits. Since we don't seem to be struggling with playables. But I think a third glare will actively still improve our deck. And then, uh, yeah, hope to pick up some more cheap sacrifice fodder. Not sure if we need to play Prophetic Prism. Could still be useful mana fixing when it comes to the double black on Archfiend on turn 4. And then the Helm can easily be cut. Ooh, nice. Late Shepherd, I'll take it. Also makes our Atlas better since we can now play Shepherd on 4. Prefer it over Head Cleaver, even though we don't have many 4 drops either. So Sinew Dancer, another card I could easily cut. So this is currently our configuration. I wouldn't mind upgrading a card or two. Okay. Might play a Scrap Trap. Or do we want a off-color Skull Bomb to just cycle? I don't think so. I think I'm rare drafting here. Don't particularly like Enforcer in this deck either. Against all odds, the rest, both pretty bad. Nothing here for us. Alright, don't mind another Hive Master, actually. Great with our Annihilating Glare. So Enforcer would be a 4-drop, which kind of fits in our curve. Maybe I'll still consider it. We'll have to take a closer look during deck building, if we have enough artifacts to enable it. Of course, our Might tokens count as well. We've got Edifice, Sword, maybe Prism, and we wield Gladiator. Nice. Knowing that we would end up opening Archfiend, maybe regret passing some of those 2-2 Flyers with Toxic, but uh, we ended up with plenty of 3-drops regardless. So we need to make 4 cuts, assuming 17 lands, which I'm fine with. We have enough 2-drops where Prophetic Prism doesn't seem like a must-have. So that can maybe go... Vanish into Eternity, one of our weaker removal spells. I think I prefer Vraska's Fall. And then Enforcer, we'll need to do a quick artifact count. So we have 5 regular artifacts. And then, how many ways to make artifact tokens? Two Hive Masters, and then uh, two Shepherds. So Shepherd can enable Enforcer all by itself, which is pretty nice. Could be convinced to still play the Enforcer, although at that point I would maybe still want Prophetic Prism in the deck. So it's kind of a package deal, almost. So maybe I just cut both. So let's say we cut Enforcer, cut Vanish. Don't have a ton of proliferate synergy in this deck. Could be nice with a Planeswalker out, I guess, but... Our deck is unlikely to poison someone to death. That one can go as well. Keep the Grimnark, which is a bit better at stabilizing us, I think. And then 40 cards. Decent number of 2-drops. Don't mind Atlas, since we don't have any 4-drops. So ramping into 5 and 6 ahead of schedule seems useful. Can even play Atlas and Glare in the same turn. Okay, and then the mana distribution, slightly more black than white, so this seems fine. Okay, we've got our deck. And uh, yeah, this seems okay. If we can hit two more land drops, we could actually play Shepherd on four. And we could decide to cycle the Skull Bomb the turn we play Atlas. Against Black White, do I want to expose Ambassador to removal? Even though it can potentially hit harder, I think we start with Gladiator. And then we can curve Atlas into Shepherd. Alright, Helm. 
we'll hold off for a 2-2. Two -two. Unless we equip a sword to it, but I think I still prefer developing my mana. Play Shepherd, and then we can possibly play and equip Sword in the same turn, which is going to be much more impactful. Inquiry, that's fine. And I'll hang on to the Skull Bomb to maybe get back Shepherd. For opponent wants to trade 2 damage for 2 damage, that's fine by me. And then Black White's not going to have too many answers to artifacts. At least that's the hope. Drown deals with Shepherd. So currently, are we in favor of equipping Gladiator or a Might token? Maybe a Might token is better since it doesn't play defense at all. Could also take a turn off to equip Sword and just go... Sword Ambassador, next turn equip, and have more mana available to cast whatever we exile with the sword, so nothing goes to waste. I think I still play an equip now. And then best case scenario hits a land, so we can play another 2-drop afterwards. The token is red, so we can attack past it. Alright, Anoint to exile it, fair enough. We'll just try and get next turn then. Although they may play another creature, which we can then ossification to clear a path. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, sword will do that to people. On the play. And this keepable for sure. Do we listen to Vraska's fall? Also a card that is probably better on the play, although against a 1-drop, maybe not so much. Still gonna play Duelist here. And also Vacation was a nice draw. Skull Bomb, okay. So, ooh, Archfiend. So, red-whites, they could have kind of the... Uh, pacifism effect for Archfiend, which is definitely a concern. And we cannot remove our own creatures. But I think I still like Vraska's Fall here, attack. Could have waited for them to play another creature first and then responded. Punisher. Okay. So yeah, just play Archfiends and hope they don't have the pacifism. And then just beat down in the air. At least we do have triple removal spell that lets us sacrifice a creature as an additional cost. So that could come in handy. Don't want to double block in case they have a plus three power pump spell. Should be able to outrace. A lifelinker could be annoying. So, still play Shepherd and then I think keep Duelist back to block the Mandible. Since if it's the Red Pump spell that gives plus 3 plus 1, we would still trade. And then next turn we can Ossification. Maybe remove a creature and keep up the pressure. Put in cycle Skull Bomb. Okay. Let's make them have it. There it is. So we still trade. Put in gains 5. Which is relevant when we're trying to race with Archfiend, but we also get to drain for two now. Sentry can remove Punisher. And 
and smash. So it's looking likely for us to kill the opponent next turn. A rabble and a concession. Awesome. So Archfiend gets it done. We'll have to keep track of how many times each of our three bombs, Archfiend, Wanderer and Sword, wins us a game. So we're one for Archfiend, one for Sword. Wanderer still has to step up. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems acceptable. Good curve out start. Opponent green white. So typically a poison aggro deck. Yeah, don't mind exiling the stalker here. Could also just play Hive Master, which can block it profitably. And then keep sentry for a slightly more threatening creature. Even if they have the plus two plus two, we would still trade, so that lines up fine. Could be a titanic growth instead. We'll infectious bites, take out duelist, fair enough. So we trade, token left over. And then I don't have any colored one drops I need to worry about. Activate this first in case we draw our tap land. There's a small argument for getting back my two drop instead, so we can play sentry and two drop in the same turn next turn. But there's a chance we don't end up playing it anyway, so... Ooh, double singer. So they can pump each other. Although Glare was a good draw. So... I could... Sentry... The singer... Glare sacking the token, kill the other. Or I can just play Hive Master and then Glare sacking the token and wait on Sentry. Since the Hive Master will hold off the Singer. Unless they have the plus two pump spell, which could then attack past Hive Master more successfully. And then next turn, slam down our 6-drop. Vorak gets to find a land. So it mitigates the effectiveness of the discard from Grimnark a little bit. But never mind, opponent decides to proliferate instead. Maybe they just failed to find a land. Or didn't need one. Okay, Grimnark it is. And then I'm not inclined to want to attack here. If they kill Grimnark, I want to have a blocker back. Opponents had another land in hand, so possible they just wanted to proliferate. And then would be a great time now to draw one of our bombs. Another Vorak. So if we don't draw anything relevant, do I sentry the Singer? Probably. Proliferates up to three. And Edifice, not incredibly relevant right now. So sure, Sentry, Exile, Singer, probably the safest move. And then Pun doesn't have any discard in green-white, so I'm okay playing out the land. And we'll hang on to the Edifice in case a one toughness creature shows up. Would be reasonable to attack with a Grimnark or the Hive Master now. But against green-white, they could have some hasty toxic creatures already at three poisons, so gonna wait until have at least one more profitable blocker or removal spell at the ready. Another Vorak. Proliferates up to four poison. And a gladiator. Opponents at two poison, so we would need to get one more in to return it from the graveyard. So maybe now I do attack with a Hive Master. See if they trade. Okay, and then now the Gladiator's online. 
could decide to play Edifice. Could hang on to it in case a one toughness creature does eventually show up. Or maybe next turn we can attack with Gladiator if they block finish off of Vorak. Ooh, Noxious Assault turns them into 5 fives. So whenever a creature blocks this turn, we get a poison counter. So could just take 15. Opponents at 14, 8, 9, 10, 11. Can't quite kill them on the way back. Would have been able to had I played Adifice. Probably okay to chump with a gladiator, get it back end of turn, and just take 10. So we're halfway normal life and poison life. Also, vacation's not bad. Could attack, leaving back sentry as a blocker. Play Edifice, and then the question is whether we also vacation or keep it as a removal spell for something larger next turn. Let's say they play another Noxious Assault, then we can still survive. Yeah, just play Edifice and then pass. All-out attack. And our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. On the play, and... Hand could be better. No toxic creature to go with Devotion. And without a toxic enabler we wouldn't be getting back the Gladiator either. Do have a double Glare, which we can still hard cast at 5 mana eventually. But yeah, leaves a lot to be desired. If I draw a cheap toxic creature, hand gets a lot better. If I draw one of my bombs, I guess a sword we can at least equip eventually. The other ones were pretty far from casting. Yeah, this one's close. I think I keep, since we have a functional hand. Just hoping to pick up a two or three mana creature soon. Shepherds were pretty far from but we'll eventually be good at enabling Glare as well. Okay, Vraska's Falls decent. Can keep up the pressure. At least got one poison counter in. And then now Vorak we can attack into with complete devotion. And hitting land drops is nice too. Not the best value, complete devotion, but good enough for now. So a land for Shepherd would be ideal. Annex Sentry, I'll take. So they can destroy the Sentry in response, and then it's just a one for one trade. Troll at least doesn't draw, but gains three life. And time to play Shepherd. Okay. So next turn can sack a Might to uh, take out an opposing creature, or we can keep the Might to eventually enable Corrupted for us. Vorak. Alright, so. Won't necessarily be able to clear a path for the Might to attack. Ambassador's not bad. Yeah, like what I could do is play Ambassador, sacrifice both Gladiator and Ambassador to Annihilating Glare, killing both creatures, attack for 5, opponent up to 3 poison. So now we can get back our Gladiator. Although that seems pretty drastic to kill two not-so-impressive creatures. So I think we just attack with Shepherd, play Ambassador and pass. Could be convinced to glare the troll right now, but it's only one mana and I have double black. So should be able to do that next turn as well.
Ooh, incubation sack, that's a problem. That's gonna take over on the ground very quickly. And we don't have a way to remove it. Sentry might have been an answer, but the Canker Bloom would have destroyed that too. So are we at a point where we need to draw with the Dross Pits? Although, if I do, I'm unable to cast some of my bombs. And uh, happy to double block. Okay. So, what's our play? Can just glare for five mana, of course. And then attack all out. Give them the option of blocking a might or trading for Ambassador to prevent more damage. And then if the Mites go through, we get back Gladiator as well. Seems fine. Just kill a token. Okay. Damage still seems like the most realistic win condition here. And then I should maybe keep land in hand in case they have the 6 drop to make us discard. Predations, painful. Okay, so they can still make an extra token with a sack. And then now we need to top deck something. Claire takes out Ambassador. Well, kind of happy they spent their entire turn on killing my 3-1. And then now I can 5 mana Glare the Vorak and start getting back Gladiator at least. And then now we definitely want to run out some lands to eventually sacrifice the Dross Pits as well. So I still don't love my position. Pun can make two more 3-3s. Three but at least we have them at 8 with Corrupted enabled. And that means Atlas is now online as well. Probably start by activating Dross Pits. Can still play Atlas and maybe a 2-drop. So if they cash in the last counter, it means they're not planning to proliferate onto it. Cultivator's fine. And last counter gone. Okay. Also, vacation deals with a token. And then we can get back Gladiator. So this enters tapped. Take four. So your opponent must have some removal if they left themselves vulnerable to the Gladiator attack. Whisper, kill my 1-1. One, one. And yeah, the proliferate could have been huge if they still had a counter on the sack. And now Grimnark, excellent way to stabilize. Okay, so we're still in it. And then I'll keep a land in hand for an opposing Grimnark. Opponent had a land as well. Okay. Definitely ahead on board now. Opponent passes. And uh, sure, can attack with a Grimnark. If I attack with both, then they profitably block Gladiator, which we get back anyways. So I think attack with both is fine. 
Because if a gladiator goes through, then Atlas is lethal. Ooh, what is this? Offer of Immortality. That's a good one. Okay, that's a bit of a setback. Although Atlas will still eventually get there. Glissa, ooh, okay. 3-3 three, three first rank death touch. Is this Atlas gonna go the distance? Looks like it. Probably no point in attacking. We would force a chum block, but leave ourselves vulnerable on the way back. Which doesn't seem worth it. Okay, can our opponent gain some life here? Yeah, that third poison counter ended up being the deciding factor, getting back Gladiator, enabling Atlas. And we don't need more than three. So Glissa destroys enchantments, draw at the cost of one life would kill them with Atlas out, and removing three counters doesn't accomplish anything, so it could double block the golem. Safest move might just be chump chump, in case of some freak pump spell sequence. Although in that case it probably would have sent a cultivator as well. In case I can somehow gain life, I prefer not throwing away all my cards. Okay. So Glissa just hits for three. Do we get there with our Atlas? Cultivator's fine. Well, this is a satisfying way to win the game, I guess. Tamper artifacts. And then... Probably no point in getting back Gladiator, although probably no huge downside to it either. Can't think of any 4 damage at instant speed. Okay. And there we go. Atlas claims its first victim. On the play, decent curve. We'll keep. Opponent seems to have an answer. Ooh, Hive. Okay, so ossification only deals with creatures and planeswalkers. So best we can do is try and race. And at least we've got a nice start with 2-drop into 3-drop, two, 2 removal spells. Although Vraska's falls quickly, gonna become bad here with all the might tokens out. Annoyance exiling our 3-drop, ouch, can't even get it back with Skull Bomb. That was a pretty big setback. So do I just cycle my Skull Bomb now and look for something more exciting? Well, that certainly counts. So game plan acquired. Do I Vraska's fall or do we wait to eventually minus four? Problem with the minus four is that it still leaves the Planeswalker vulnerable. So I might prefer to just Vraska's fall, do some damage control while the opponent's missing their land drops. Attack with a Gladiator, plan to kill the token. Might as well do it now. And hope we get to 6 mana and just take over before opponents gets a foothold in the game. Sentry, we can exile at least. And next turn we'll be able to play our Planeswalker. Okay. 
So don't hate my position, although there are answers to Planeswalkers out there. So it may not be a surefire victory. Attendance... pretty large. Yeah, it's good if we had the other two mana removal spell in white, not quite as good against ossification. I'll slam down Wanderer and then probably just make a Samurai to start out. Could minus four, leave them with a token, leave myself with a Gladiator. So what's the worst case? Let's say we Wanderer, make a Samurai. They have a removal spell for the Samurai token attack. Then I can still jump, and then we should still be okay. Hopefully they don't have an answer to my Planeswalker. A Raptor, fly a token is pretty good, or never mind, fly the Attendant. Also has Toxic, so they can't quite finish off Wanderer, but then next turn the Raptor will be able to. So that's rough. They might have the Pump Spell, which finishes off my Planeswalker, but at least we blocked the tokens. Okay, so we only get to keep it in play for one turn, which is not great, but we got a Samurai at least. And then for now, Edifice, kill the 1-1, one, one. attack. Hope we can just take them out with their own hive. Okay. Still at zero poison ourselves. <laughs> well, I, I guess it's only fair. I think we're gonna need another bomb here. Well, that's an answer. Yeah, Eternal Wanderer, pretty average card, just makes a token and dies. I'm not sure what all the hype is all about. So in our win condition is the opponent's hive. Shepherd, hmm. It's a lot of tokens now. So I don't know if we'll be able to keep them from enabling a lifelink. Okay, okay. No attacks. Keeping a land in hand again in case of the 6 drop, so we don't let them gain any life. So we mostly care about blocking the toxic creatures. A raptor can fly one of them. Times two. Okay. Well, we can block one with Shepherd at least. So yeah, not letting them enable lifelink on Hive is the main priority. Opponent has plenty of blockers back on defense, I doubt we can kill them on the way back. So this is a fine block. Could block the attendant, although I might prefer just uh, blocking a token. So we take two poisons, still no lifelink, since these are both toxic one. And all good blocks, so this seems fine. Okay, so our opponent has four blockers back to our five attackers. But next turn they'll have lifelink enabled. So, yeah, I don't love my position. Just gonna try and hold out. And then I'll probably trade my Samurai for the opponent's attendance. Duelist is good too. 
Bone and Dross. So they're sacrificing one Raptor to give lifelink to the whole team. And that's gonna work, unfortunately. That's the top deck. Now, sadly, does not give protection from white, which is what we really wanted. Although putting it on a double striker is still pretty good value, and then we can still move it afterwards. And they're just going to trade for a bunch of creatures here. That's fine. Let's say if we kill this one in first strike damage, they gain the least amount of life. And then move sword to flyer. And then have two good blocks on the ground, good block in the air. And hopefully we can take over. Hive Masters, acceptable. <laughs> and another Hive. Wow. So they'll end up losing two life to that. Opponent just wants to gain some life. At least it feels a little desperate, which is good. Okay, so if my Shepherd attacks, they could double block, which is maybe okay. If I move it to the Duelist, then they don't have as good of a block. They can just jump with a Hive Master. We move back to Shepherd, and that's fine by me. Do we get a hidden? We do. Okay. And uh, those are both quite powerful. Only get to play one of them. If I play Archfiend, then I also get to move the sword back to one of my flyers. Can we kill the opponent in time with Archfiend? I think we do. So yeah, Archfiend it is. Opponent found another Shepherd. They're at two, so if they don't gain any life, they're just dead. What an interesting game. Double Hive, double Wandering Emperor. And eventually the Sword. And our Archfiend, so all our bombs showed up. Top half of our library, so that's kind of lucky. Okay, so block here. And block here. Opponent gains 4, but ends up losing 4 to the Archfiend, so that didn't really accomplish much. And we can just pass a turn, let them die to their own Hive. Sure. Seems fitting. Awesome. On the play, and... Hmm. The sand's... Uh, Kind of awkward, missing creatures to enable Glare, or to equip Sword, and we're very far from Grimnark. I think it's still probably a keep. We just need to draw a creature in the first three turns, and then get our Sword going, which we can play in the meantime. If we hit some lands, I can hardcast Glare to buy time. It's not perfect, but not gonna turn down the Sword. Nice. That was the best case scenario. Find a 2-drop. Not gonna trade it off. Play sword versus play edifice. I think we play sword. 
If they kill the gladiator now, it's not gonna feel great. Alright, so expecting them to have something to remove gladiator, probably a Vraska's fall. So in that case, I think I should just attack, play edifice. And have two creatures to equip. Yep. Okay. Got our two damage in at least. Attendant's fine. Opponent really wanted that extra token. And be surprised if they attack, because that means having to trump my edifice with attendant to prevent a card draw. So I'll accept that attack any day. So equip sword, attack. Happy if they chump. And if not, we get to get some value. Okay. Perfect. Would have been even better with an extra land, but I'm not going to complain. And then now equipping Duelist with First Strike is even better. So... Even though we're starting to get a little bit low on life, I should still avoid trading off my creatures when we have a sword. And then hopefully Glare can take care of some creatures soon. Scourge, not quite. Death Dutch lifelink yet. So I could cast a 5 mana Glare, killing Scourge. Or I could just attack with, let's say, the Edifice. If they chump, that's fine. Then we hard cast Glare, killing attendants, and move on. Or I guess Duelist could also attack, since mm, I guess it does block the Might, which is relevant when we're at two poison. So, yeah, just attack with Edifice, see if they want to chump. Possible our opponent can give it Death Touch at instant speed if they have the one mana proliferate trick, but it doesn't seem like it from the way they've been playing. Well, that solves that problem. Wanderer, leave the opponents. I guess we will lose the Wanderer, unless we keep Duelist and let our opponent keep the Might. Yeah, I guess leave myself with Duelist, opponent with the Might. Choose Duelist, choose Might. Alright. So, big turn coming up. Can they remove Duelist? If they cannot, then our Planeswalker is going to take over. And yeah, looks like Eternal Wanderer has stuck the landing. So we can start making Samurai. Could also plus one, remove Gladiator. So Duelist can attack. Sure. Could also glare, but then I'm spending all my mana here. And then we should be able to find something else to block the mites on the way back. And that will do. And then I might as well move the equipment. Okay, so now both creatures are lethal. Double glare in hand, planeswalker. Good luck to our opponent. Okay. Well, this definitely feels like both a wanderer and sword victory. So, I think sword's in the lead now with three victories, followed by the demon. That means we have to win another game with the wanderer, right? Yeah, there it is. Turn two, let's go with Duelists. And then Ambassador keep up one mana. That seems fine. Just need to add some land drops now. 
Ooh, Antiphus is a good one. Kill Ambassador for free. And Indestructible is not going to help. Shepherd, we're close to casting. So do I want to keep attacking? Not really. I think we just got to play for the long game now. Pass with uh, Vraska's Fall available. Probably played in response to removal. Or another creature. Yeah, I should just fall now and then just uh, block the other creature. Clean board is what we like to see. And a rip skiff. Land is great. I'll take another one of those. Although Black Green can certainly have some answers to Planeswalkers. Nurse can crew Ripskiff. And then, uh, yeah, Toxic 2 starts adding up. But there's a land. Kind of like Grimnark before playing Eternal Wanderer. Opponent cannot play their own Grimnark to make me discard yet. This way the board will be a little bit more stable. Might as well attack with Shepherd since it doesn't block particularly well here. They can likely remove Grimnark, but then they're less likely to remove Wanderer. Grimnark has been pretty good for us too. Just another nice curve topper. Can't play too many, of course. Opponent Cruise. So. Best comma trick they could have is Death Touch Indestructible. What if we just take it? I have 8, 9, 10 on the way back, almost lethal. 2 poison up to 6 is kind of scary. Not too concerned about the activated ability. I think I should just take it. Because if it's a, a green pump spell, trade would be totally fine by me. But if it's a Death Touch Indestructible, I would feel kind of bad blocking with a Grimnark. Blind Bally Rats, fine. Okay, so we might want to consider playing defense. Just play Wander, make a Samurai, and pass. Because, yeah, the minus four does not deal with vehicles. I want to make sure we can protect our Planeswalker if possible. Could also plus one, but. Samurai seems better. Could consider attacking with a flyer, but if they remove, let's say, the Grimnark, I could still maybe double block. Keep land in hand for opposing Grimnarks. And hope to be able to untap with Wanderer and just pull ahead. We did give up some potentially good attacks if they just remove Emperor itself. But so it goes. Okay, Ripskiff is going to try again, although now we can block with a Samurai. And then maybe Shepherd on Rats, and then force a trick here, proliferate up to 7, that's fine. And our opponent explodes, awesome, the clean sweep here, and yeah. Got uh, two wins thanks to our Planeswalker, two wins from the Demon, and three wins from the Sword. That was the final tally. So all our bombs pulled their weight. And uh, yeah, it goes to show that Limited, sadly, is still a format that's sometimes decided by the rare bombs. As much as you can build a synergistic deck with cool commons and uncommons, sometimes a Planeswalker will still completely take over. 
and uh, yeah, can be lucky enough to open them, can be unfortunate enough to face them. But let's crack some packs. Pack one, pick one. Yeah, Glider is a slam dunk first pick, definitely a bomb. Give all your creatures haste and flying, even if they answer the initial token. Next up, Mirex, also one of the better utility lands in the set. So I'm not opposed to taking it early, especially good in your more controlling toxic decks that want to play a long game. So like blue-black might be the best home for it, but any toxic deck is going to be happy to have this in their mana base. So certainly first pickable, not a fan of the communion. The other cards are pretty medium. A rare wild card, best rare in the set, might be the wonder that we just opened. And uh, Noxious Assault we've seen in the draft as well. Can be a good finisher for kind of a go-white, green-white tokens deck maybe, with a bit of toxic synergy. Necrosquito can also be okay, probably at its best in blue-black, where you have a bit of removal to enable it and proliferate to add more counters. The red 5-drop with two oil counters to give haste has also been impressive so far, especially in red-green. Melira's okay, 2 mana 3-3. Three, three. Problem with picking it early is that it does commit you to green-white, so you would much prefer to see this somewhere in the middle of the pack when you're already into either green or white, and then be able to pivot. Uh, it's not a bad first pick. In this pack it might be the way to go since there's nothing too exciting. Could always take like a Serum Snare. And next up, the Rat King. Not an exciting first pick, unfortunately. I've been pretty happy with uh, Trawler Drake at its best in blue-red. And uh, Free From Flash, also a decent trick, so is Tyvar's Stand. Definitely one of the better combo tricks in the set. And final pack. Ooh, nice Bloated Contaminator. Great card in any green deck. Kinda works by itself but at its best in probably green-white and black-green. Okay. Well, those were some fun pack one pick ones, and yeah. Got lucky to open some nice bombs in the draft, which is always fun. So that's gonna wrap things up for today's stream. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.